Last week I started a series on the anointing where I've talked about how anointing comes by association but it grows by our desperation. Today I want to continue in that series by talking about a message part two, inner and outer anointing. If you have your Bible, let's open together with us. We will have verses on the screen and if you are in the area or you are local, you can actually open your view version Bible app and see the notes there as well. In in Ephesians chapter 4 verse, 4 verse 30 it says and do not grieve the Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 it says the following do not quench the Spirit. I want to speak about today the inner and the outer anointing. Inner anointing is the anointing that works on inside of you to produce a character of Christ in you. The outer anointing is the anointing that flows through you to impact the world around you through miracles, signs and wonders. And the scripture tells us do not grieve the Holy Spirit means do not quench, do not stop the inner anointing because the Holy Spirit inside of us, He produces that character and when we grieve the Holy Spirit, this, the work of the Holy Spirit stops and the inner anointing stops. And it also says do not quench the Holy Spirit and this it refers to do not stop the flow of the Holy Spirit to flow through you into other people's lives. It is as wrong to quench the Holy Spirit as it is to grieve the Holy Spirit. It is as wrong to grieve the Holy Spirit as it is to quench Him. Many times we go to places and people ask us, are miracles more important than character? And the others, is character more important than miracles? I want you to see that in the Bible it says to pursue love and in the same verse Paul says zeal for the gifts. Bible puts character and miracles on the same level of importance. Let me ask you a question. Which hand is more important? Your right hand or your left hand? Which eye is more important? Your left eye or your right eye? Which ear is more important to you? Your left ear or your right ear? See both ears are equally important. Both eyes are equally important. Both arms are equally important. Both legs are equally important. Character and the miracles are equally important. Character is not more important than miracles and miracles are not more important than character. These two things are the two things that cause the Holy Spirit to work through and in a person. Inner anointing works in me. Our anointing works through me and Bible says don't stop the inner anointing by grieving the Holy Spirit and don't stop the flow of the anointing by quenching the Holy Spirit. And many of us we've been taught so much on the importance of character that we will work on our character till we die and not one miracle will happen through our life because we feel like as long as I have a good character the Holy Spirit is happy. But He's not very happy if He doesn't have the freedom to flow through you to heal people. Because the Bible says do not quench the Holy Spirit. In the same way it says do not grieve the Holy Spirit. When you not quench the Holy Spirit, He flows freely to heal people. When you don't grieve the Holy Spirit, He freely operates to help you and to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll hear the testimonies probably on Wednesday. But we had a home group that on Friday, teenage girls, young girls, 13, 14, you know, 15 years of age that had a home group in the park and they are here with us today. And they saw an Indian couple that was there and they saw, they came up to that couple, asked if they had pain in their body. They had pain in their body. They started to pray for them and both husband and the wife received healing. Not only that, their doctor was with them and he was shocked with the fact that the pain that they've had for so long, teenage girls took care of it by the name of Jesus, that he took pictures of it. When you clean your house, you're not grieving the Holy Spirit. But when you're praying for the sick, you're not quenching the Holy Spirit. When you're not praying for others, when you're not ministering to others, you're quenching the Holy Spirit in you. And when you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to develop your character, it grieves Him. The inner and the outer anointing. I want to take the proof text from Genesis chapter 20. And this whole chapter is a very powerful chapter. Genesis chapter 20 and I'm going to take a verse 5. Did He not say to me, she is my sister? That's Abimelech saying to God in the dream. And she even herself said, 
he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands I have done this so point number one inner anointing Abimelech and Abraham are a good picture of how both of these anointings they operate unfortunately they were operating exclusively of each other Abimelech in here we see that he takes the wife of Abraham unknowingly in ignorance he gets deceived by Abraham to take Sarah and Abimelech has God visit him in a dream at night and says you're a dead man you took this man's wife and Abimelech raises his hands and says God you know that in the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands I've done this and God says I do that's why I came to warn you I want you to see something in Genesis chapter 20 this is the first time God appeared to someone in a dream and he appeared to someone in a dream someone who had integrity it's fascinating because it wasn't Noah it wasn't Lot and it wasn't Abraham it was a Philistines king who though he didn't have that connection to God that Abraham did but because of the integrity in him and because of the innocence in his life it fascinates me also that he married Sarah and he didn't sleep with her talk about integrity talk about holiness in the guy's life and his life was so different that he says Lord Lord will you destroy a righteous nation means not only he lived in integrity his nation was righteous there was something about this man that attracted God's attention to that degree where God came and God warned him that he's about to hook up with the wrong woman see when you have an inner anointing the first thing that will happen is God will always warn you when you're about to make a mistake God will warn you when you're about to make a bad deal with somebody who will dupe you financially. God will warn you about the investment that about to go south. When you have an integrity in you, God comes in. See, people can try to fool you. Some business partners can try to fool you. But see, when God sees you, even Abraham couldn't fool Abimelech because God stepped in and says, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to warn you. Many of us learn a lesson after we get burned. But when you walk in the inner anointing, God protects you from getting burned. Can somebody say amen? amen when you walk in inner anointing second thing that happens is that God will begin to communicate to you God spoke to Abimelech we all want to hear God's voice and instead of just saying Lord I want you to I want you to speak to me we have to say Lord I yield to your anointing to produce within me an integrity and innocence and third thing that is produced when we yield to inner anointing is that we experience a miracle from God in Genesis chapter 20 not only this is the first time that God spoke in a dream that's recorded in the Bible but this is the first time that's recorded in the Bible where God healed someone and who did he heal he healed Abimelech's family why did he heal them because of the integrity God says because of this integrity that you have because of this work of God that you've allowed to happen in your heart he says I will reveal to you the reason why women in your house are barren many times we have barrenness in our life and we're asking God what is the real reason and we're just kind of like going through prayers shooting up the whole storm you know like thinking if we're just going to attack everything we're going to hit something but there's a difference when God comes to you and God puts a finger on exactly root problem that is in your life and God does that when you allow the inner anointing to flow through your life God did that to, to, to Abimelech he protected him he spoke to him and he revealed to him the root problem and not only that God says I want you to go to Abraham return his wife and ask him to pray for you if I would be Abimelech I would say excuse me you said what the guy just duped me and God says by the way he's my prophet I would tell God well God you got pathetic prophets I don't know what you're manufacturing there but these guys are a bunch of liars and cowards he just caused this problem in my family and you're telling me not only to return his wife but you're asking me to also ask him to pray for me I don't want no evil spirits of lying operating in my family I want you to see I want you to see integrity at its best integrity is how you treat people who disappointed you it's how you treat those that hurt you it's how you treat those that rejected you integrity is how you treat those can you forgive return 
and like Abimelech not only he returned his wife Abimelech also went and gave gifts to Abraham and said Abraham the best real estate in town you can take it and live there and then Abimelech came to Abraham and says could you come and pray for my family that takes integrity it doesn't take any integrity to share a piece of your mind with people see the way world treats problems and difficulties when people run and you know challenge us or do something bad is we say well share them share with them a piece of your mind well the problem with some of us we ain't got much left because we've been sharing that with everyone Jesus says when people reject you he says don't share peace of your mind he says make sure your peace comes back to you and shake off the dust see God's principle with dealing with situations and cases where you get rejected overlooked or you get lied to or you get hurt which will always happen to us is God's deal is this I don't want you to share peace of your mind I want you to keep your peace and I want you to keep the inner anointing why because that is more important than anything else in your life can somebody say amen real character my friends I want you to write this down is when people hurt us treating people like they treated us if we treat people like they treat us what it will do is number one it will ruin and reveal our character it will reveal our character and it will ruin our character Abimelech learned Abraham lied to me I'm gonna honor him you know what that says about Abraham that he's a liar do you know what that says about Abimelech he's a good man how you treat people reveals a lot about you not them how you treat your spouse as a husband doesn't tell us a lot about your wife it tells us a lot about you how you treat your husband as a, as a wife it tells us a lot about you as a wife not him as a husband sometimes wives come up and say things like well my husband he doesn't do this he doesn't do that he doesn't do this he's not like this he's not like that so I don't respect him the reason why you don't respect him woman is because you are disrespectful woman and if you ever get kids you'll be shocked and surprised your kids will never respect you because you broke God's order and the reason why husbands sometimes says well my wife is so emotional she's so unstable and she doesn't do this and she doesn't do that she's not as spiritual as me and so I don't love her as much I belittle her I make fun of her I call her with names the reason why you call her with names the reason why you belittle her is because you're a nasty man the problem isn't with your wife the problem is with your character because your character is revealed in how you treat those who mistreat you and the way you treat them reveals a lot about you not them the Bible says is the good man out of a good treasure of his heart brings forth good if you squeeze an orange pineapple will not come out the fact you got squeezed and nastiness came out that means nastiness were there in the first place and it took that pressure and that situation to reveal that you were a nasty person but the problem with us is what we do is we blame it on the crazy people in our life and we say well if I wouldn't be married to that crazy person I would be a nice person you can't blame it if you want to change the first principle of seeing your character change is acknowledging that what stuff comes out of you your attitude and your behavior you own to it and when you own it God can change it blaming your circumstances on your bad character is like blaming a mirror for your bad hair when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you see craziness you don't grab a hammer and go break the mirror you grab a brush and you change your hair come on somebody and many people think if I go change my spouse, if I go change just, you know, get rid of my kids, if I get rid of this and get rid of that, I change the job. Now, sometimes you need to really change things up. But please understand, if my house has a broken toilet, I don't switch the house. I switch the toilet. If you have a problem in that relationship and you realize that there is an attitude, that there's a character, you behave vengeful, bad person. Listen, the problem isn't with the other person. The problem is you have to change you first otherwise if you go into a new relationship you're still the old you you'll have exactly same results and we see that Abimelech realizes Abraham has treated me I am not going to treat him like he treat me why he's a liar I'm a good man I will honor him not because he's honorable because I'm honoring can somebody say amen the way you treat other people says a lot about you not them and the reason why we should not treat people the way they treat us number two is it grieves the Holy Spirit anytime you you hurt people who hurt you you're hurting the Holy Spirit it's not okay to hurt others 
because they hurt you because it hurts the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not grieved when you pray less Holy Spirit is grieved by our behavior toward people around us the verse about grieving the Holy Spirit after that it says let all bitterness let all malice let all evil speaking be removed from you and be tender-hearted toward one another and forgiving to each other as Christ in God forgave you that means that grieving the Holy Spirit has very little to do with speaking in tongues anointing yourself with oil and walking around your house like it's a Jericho and shutting the bringing the walls down it has very little to do with that it has very little to do with posting your cutest scripture on your Facebook wall it has to do with how you speak how you think and how you behave to people around you the Holy Spirit is affected with how I treat my wife. The Holy Spirit is affected with how I talk to my pastor. The Holy Spirit is affected with how I talk to people that I don't need in my life. The Holy Spirit is grieved when I treat people the way they treat me. And the Holy Spirit is honored when I treat people the way God wants me to treat them. Can somebody say amen? And many people say, come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. And number three is it doesn't fix our problem. If Abimelech would have came to Abraham and said, Abraham, you're a bad man. I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to hire some assassins to take you out. I'm going to block you on every social media site because you hurt me. You did this and you did that. You know what that would not change the fact that Abimelech's wives were barren. Many times people are so busy destroying other people's lives that they don't have time to build their own many times people go around giving everybody peace of their mind many times people are so around making everybody even you know I just you know I just want to catch up with them and I just want to you know make them even and stuff so your life is your goal is not to get even your goal is to get ahead your goal is not for your enemies to fail your goal is for you to succeed and if you are busy hoping that they will fail you will waste the anointing to build your own life and Abimelech knew I don't have time to play who is right and who is wrong I don't have time to change Abraham that's God's job I want barren women in my house to be healed and that's my job see when people hurt us when people do this and that our goal is not to try to square them out that is God's problem our problem is that God we want to be nice we want to honor the Holy Spirit why so that our problems get resolved Sometimes I see people, you know, they have a mess in their life, mess in their life. And there they are, suing, staying with posters, trying to prove something. You're like, listen, you got, you got a World War III in your own house. Forget about the world. Go fix your own. But see, because we're busy fixing, squaring everybody out, and we realize we got our own problem, demons in our own house. And Abimelech realized, God, Abraham sucks, but that's your problem. He's your prophet, not mine. I have a problem and I need your help. Mm -hmm. You may not like the church, you may not like certain people, that's God's problem, not yours. Your problem is you have a sickness in the body. Your problem is your kids aren't serving God. Your problem is that you're back on your payments, you got credit card debt and you're coming to God and say, Lord, they, 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 you fix them. Me, you fix my problems God and I'm gonna focus on my life I'm gonna mind my own business and I'm gonna believe for a miracle in my own life can somebody say amen the Holy Spirit comes in us to build within us a character of Christ not to fix our reputation what many times we don't understand or what we one of the reasons why the inner anointing is quenched in our life is because we think the Holy Spirit sits in heaven and nervously the only thing he's thinking about it is how to make people talk good about you and how to make people like you. Holy Spirit does not lose sleep if there are people who don't like you. When people call Jesus with nasty names, when they said he had a demon, when people said that Jesus is running crazy, Jesus and the Holy Spirit were not going nervous at heaven and saying, what are we doing about what Pharisees are posting on the internet? These latest things on the blogs right now, these CNN news, the Fox News is saying this about Jesus. What do we do about the news stories? How do we police that? How do we control that? Jesus did not care about his reputation. He did not need to prove his reputation because he had character. Remember this. The Holy Spirit comes in you, not to fix your reputation, to fix your character. And when your character is taken care of, your reputation 
will be taken care of by itself and if it doesn't it will only be maintained by crazy people that nobody trusts and nobody respects anyway your character is who you are your reputation is who you pretend to be your character is your face your reputation is your photograph photoshopped airbrushed squeezed and made to look just so that you get likes your character it's what you have your reputation is built in the moment your character is built over time your reputation is what people say about you when you move into a community when you just get a job or you move into a hungry generation that's your reputation your character is what people say about you when you move out of the community when you move out of the school or when you move out of the hungry generation your reputation is what men say about you your character is what God knows about you your reputation is the shadow your character is the tree God the Holy Spirit comes in us to develop inner anointing not to fix our reputation our reputation will fix itself and the reason why many of us do not have a good character because we're busy building good reputation reputation will make you rich or poor but character will make you happy or miserable everybody has opinions about you opinions is like feet everyone has them and sometimes they stink we focus on what God says about us and we focus on what Holy Spirit is doing in us because that is what changes our life in Jesus name amen amen I'm gonna bring this message to an end the second part of it I guess I'll share next Sunday because I want to take time today I want to take time to pray and we'll deliver on the outer anointing next Sunday and I think if we apply 10% of what I just mentioned the world will be a better place amen <laughs> Amen. The Holy Spirit is with us. He's in us to change us, but He flows through us to impact the world around us. Can somebody say Amen? And this Holy Spirit, He sets people free. And this Holy Spirit, He changes characters. But this Holy Spirit, He also breaks bondages, like we've heard today. He delivers people from demons, He delivers people from sickness. He sets people at liberty and He sets them above, not beneath, in Jesus' name. And today as we're going to have prayer line, we're going to see the Holy Spirit moving and in the invisible world, separating people from their darkness, separating them from their bondage and bringing liberty in their life, in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody say amen? Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.